Hello, I'm Richard Gisbert, and you're at the Listening Post. This week, President Obama reaches out to the Arab world. We are taking concrete actions to change course. But refuses to release pictures of the U.S. torturing Arabs to the American media. The British newspaper and the political scoop that rocked the government there. It's not a car crash for the government, it's a multiple pileup, frankly. Lebanese television and self-censorship in the last days of the election campaign. And Jose, can you the star-spangled banner, the immigrant song. On my lawn. As President Barack Obama delivered his historic speech in Cairo to a worldwide television audience, he left a firefight behind in Washington between the White House press office and the media. The row centers on photographs that depict the abuse and torture of detainees held by the U.S. in the so-called War on Terror during the Bush administration. Though many photos have already been released, President Obama is refusing to make public an additional 44 images, and therein lies the debate. The White House explains its decision by saying it doesn't want to create any more anger over the torture issue. And what's more, the American president is now backing a new law that would amount to a wholesale suppression of any pictures relating to torture, leaving it up to the Pentagon to decide what we should or should not see. That's our starting point this week, the Obama administration, the media, and the fight to get the full picture of what really happened inside those American prisons. We begin with the president's decision to try to block the release of prisoner abuse photos. After strong lobbying from his top military commanders, he did an about face, planning to try and block the photos from getting made public. And I want to emphasize that these photos that were requested in this case uh, are not particularly sensational, uh, especially when compared to the painful images that we remember from Abu Ghraib. If these pictures are not as provocative, could they really be so bad to, to release? If you hide the photos, uh, people are going to guess at what's in them. He believed in his heart that this would endanger our troops, and it would not be good PR for the United States of America. He talked a good game of transparency during the campaign. Being open and transparent and accountable to the American people. And this is not an example of transparency in government. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. Barack Obama knows that America's torturing of prisoners is a big issue in the Arab and Muslim worlds. That's why he raised it in Cairo. We are taking concrete actions to change course. I have unequivocally prohibited the use of torture by the United States. And I have ordered the prison at Guantanamo Bay closed by early next year. President Obama didn't just ban torture. He ordered his Justice Department to release a series of memos that detailed what U.S. interrogators had done, the waterboarding, and the rest of it. But memos and documents are one thing. Pictures, apparently, are another. There is something different about putting out a bunch of legal memos and putting out images, and that images resonate for the, for the rest of the world. People that, that won't take the time to read a news article will see an image and the image will shock them. And the image should shock them because what happened is shocking. Very senior Pentagon source tells me uh, these photographs have been withheld. The 44 that Obama saw are nothing compared to the photographs that came out in 2004, 2006. Uh, but then other people uh, have told me, no, 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 they're very disturbing. They potentially uh, could cause uh, some serious backlash. But my understanding is that even inside the Pentagon, there was a very sharp difference of opinions on this. The American Civil Liberties Union, the ACLU, is among the groups pushing hardest to make all of the images public. News websites in the U.S., such as Salon.com and The Daily Beast, are pushing too. This is a case of new media either being hungrier or smarter on this story than the mainstream news media. Certainly in this case, non-mainstream media in the United States has played a pretty big role in the prisoner abuse story unfolding. In early 2006, Salon.com obtained hundreds and hundreds of images of prisoner abuse from Abu Ghraib. So I think in this particular case, the mainstream media has not played as important a role as maybe some of the non-traditional media like Salon. And when one mainstream news outlet, Britain's Daily Telegraph, got involved, it got the story slightly wrong, reporting that some of the pictures at issue were taken at Abu Ghraib in Iraq when they were actually from other prisons. In an expert piece of political counterspinning, the White House took the paper's relatively minor mistake and turned it into an attack on the entire British media. If I wanted to read a write-up today of how Manchester United fared last night in the Champions League Cup, I might open up a British newspaper. If I was looking for something that bordered on truthful news, I'm not entirely sure it would be the first stack of clips I picked up. 
Gibbs has taken the, the, the opportunity to jump all over the telegraph and, and point out the fact that they're wrong. And yes, the article is wrong uh, and mischaracterizes the photos that are in question. The telegraph got it wrong. It conflates a number of issues. It confuses Abu Ghraib photos with these abuse photos that have not been released. Gibbs seized upon that uh, and their coinage to support his position. Uh, but, you know, it's, uh, I, I would say it's, it's seriously off focus. Uh, the question is, uh, in fact, have, have they released everything? The answer is no, they haven't, and they won't anytime soon. For all that campaign talk of transparency, President Obama is now supporting a new piece of legislation that would allow the U.S. government to withhold the release of any photograph taken between September 11, 2001 and January 2009 relating to the treatment of individuals engaged, captured, or detained after 9-11 by the armed forces of the United States in operations outside the United States. Whether or not we should release more photos. The law, known as the Graham Lieberman Secrecy Law, would give the Pentagon and the administration carte blanche in suppressing any picture should any U.S. military personnel ever commit anything resembling a war crime. It overrides and amends um, the Freedom of Information Act that has been the way that um, the ACLU and other organizations have been able to get disclosure of, of all of these torture documents. What this does, it actually changes the underlying law. So it basically says that, that the courts uh, don't, uh, can't um, release photos um, once the Secretary of Defense makes his certification. Uh, those photographs are, contain evidence of crimes. So the administration supported that legislation, um, you know, really flatly contradicts promises that Obama made uh, in the course of his campaign. It's not the photos that are the problem here. The mistake is not taking the photos or releasing the photos. The mistake is abusing prisoners in the first place. That's embarrassing, and that's what inflames anti-American sentiment, and rightly so. With one hand, the American president is reaching out to the Muslim world. With the other, he plans to sign into law new powers that will allow the U.S. military to suppress any visual evidence of any more past crimes before they come to light. It is a case, a transparent case, of a candidate preaching one policy and a president practicing another. Here's how our Global Village voices see the reporting of the torture pictures. The British news media is all over this, wondering why he's not releasing them, berating him for going back on a campaign promise, while the American news media is virtually silent on this issue. And that's because it's a self-imposed censorship by the American news media in reference to this president. They put him into office. They are invested in his success. So there is no way the American news media is going to publish anything to tarnish this president. This did happen on President Bush's watch and not President Obama's watch. And for that reason, I thought it would have been right for the president to release the images. What I'm disappointed about is that the president has not just done that, he's refused to release them, and he's allowed his press secretary, Robert Gibbs, to uh, launch ferocious attacks on the British media. Those of you looking to get on the air as one of our Global Village voices can reach us the old-fashioned way. Email us at listeningpost at aljazeera.net, or you can go on Facebook and look for the Listening Post page, or you can follow us on Twitter. We will let you know via Facebook and Twitter what stories we're working on and how you can get with the program. You can also use any of those links to suggest stories to us or Internet videos of the week. Time now for some quick hits from the world of media, Listening Post News Bites. The numbers are in from a new public opinion poll taken in the Arab world, and the results are not good for the U.S. government's television propaganda arm, Al Hura TV. The poll, taken by the University of Maryland and Zogby International, concluded that just one half of one percent of Arab viewers watch Al Hura. Since the Bush administration put Al Hura on the air in 2004, it has cost U.S. taxpayers more than half a billion dollars, and its budget has gone up by 20 percent over the last two years. The poll found that Al Jazeera remains the first choice of 55 percent of Arab viewers, and that while some channel-surfing Arabs do check out Al Hura from time to time, it is clearly not where they go to get the news. The U.S. military has changed tack in the way it deals with information from the battlefield in Afghanistan. For the first time since the Vietnam War, body counts are back, although not everyone thinks that's a good idea. 
The U.S. command in Afghanistan now publicizes every single enemy fighter killed in combat, saying that there have been nearly 2,000 killed in the past 14 months. The U.S. has always kept track of its own casualties, but there's a school of thought that says keeping enemy body counts is counterproductive. U.S. officers say they're doing it in Afghanistan to counter concerns at home that the war there is being lost, but critics suggest the numbers are not reliable. Publicizing them only angers Afghanis the U.S. is trying to win over, and that controlling territory as opposed to killing people is the only real way to win the war. Lebanon is known for its factionalized and occasionally incendiary media landscape. Now, with elections coming up on June 7th, one of its TV channels, LBC, has decided to muzzle some of its own people. LBC has banned all political satire on its air until after the elections. The Lebanese daily Al Akbar reports that among the shows temporarily off the air is Basmat Watan, shown here mocking Prime Minister Fouad Signora. Shows like this have stoked political tensions in Lebanon before. Back in 2006, after Basmat Watan aired an unflattering impression of the Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah, Hezbollah supporters took to the streets. Clearly, LBC wants to avoid a similar incident ahead of the elections. Here's a story that's not quite as dramatic as news reports would have us believe. Wikipedia has announced that it's taking steps against Scientologists to stop them using the online open source encyclopedia for propaganda. Wikipedia says it will do that by blocking anyone using a Scientology IP address from editing the Scientology page. The announcement got plenty of coverage, but Scientologists can still edit the page. They just have to do it from a private email address, and who would know? Wikipedia is the most popular reference site on the World Wide Web, but its critics often point out its inability to filter out unreliable content. Italian Prime Minister and media mogul Silvio Berlusconi has managed to stop the publication of a set of photographs that just might have complicated his upcoming divorce proceedings. The pictures were taken at a New Year's party and have been described as scandalous in nature. Berlusconi succeeded in blocking their publication through an injunction granted after he said that the pictures would violate his right to privacy. Berlusconi's wife, Veronica Ladio, has made it clear that her husband's flirtations with young women who he is not married to are one of the reasons she wants out of the marriage. We're back after the break with a report on the newspaper scoop that could bring down the British government.